Welcome back to episode four of Creator Conversations, where I get the chance to talk to some of the most influential content creators in this personal finance and credit card niche that we find ourselves in. Last week, I had the pleasure of talking with Mark Plymail, where we not only talked just about credit cards, but we also talked about his passions for American history, Frisbee golf, and much more. So make sure you watch that one after this one if you're interested. But today's guest is another person I've been a fan of for quite a while because his channel really just puts out a ton of content and a ton of valuable content at that. And I've personally been able to learn a ton from him and his personal experience not just in the credit card game, but with bank account bonuses too. And in general, he just really has taught me how to be the most profitable I can be and learn how to take money from the banks. Without further ado, I'd love to welcome in RJ from RJ Financial into the conversation here today. RJ, how's it going? Internet, what's going on? This is exciting. I never get invited anywhere, so I'm happy to be here. Yeah, got to get you out of the normal the normal camera setup. Normal camera setup, but still not out of the house, which is what I'm known for. So uh, we're, we're doing good. <laughs> Good thing you got the Time uniform steps. on too. Oh, it's like a Power Rangers morphing time and you just transform and you're good to go. Right. Like, I don't know who will get that reference, but people have to know the Power Rangers, right? Oh yeah. I grew up with them, but yeah, I'm glad to have you in here here today. I'd like to obviously just start off by letting you give a quick intro about you, maybe talk about how we met and what you do on your channel and otherwise. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. You know, for those who haven't read my Wikipedia page, I don't know if I have one yet, but mm -hmm. I am the, what I, my tagline I use is like, I'm the host of America's most profitable YouTube shows, which is obviously a little tongue in cheek, uh, but RJ Financial is focused on a lot of credit cards and kind of adjacent banking topics, financial topics, and you we also run on the bank, which is all about bank account bonuses and making banks money, your money. And I'm also editor in chief of ProfitableContent.com, which is the channel's uh, blog. And I've given myself all of those titles. So they all kind of connect. And the whole gist of it is, is how do we take money from banks, whether it be cards, bank accounts, you name it. That's what we're interested in. That's what we're here to do. Uh, so we met, uh, it's been a few months now. I think you reached out. We just kind of connected, started to get to, get to know each other, meet, meet each other, you know, meet new folks in the space best practices, things like that. And uh, we hit it off. And uh, so here I am. So I'm happy right. to, uh, again, happy to be here because no one else invites me anywhere. So I've yeah. met other people. They never invited me. So it's probably me. <laughs> no, I don't think so. After this one, I'm sure they'll, they'll all come flooding in. But I do hope that through this series, people just get to know everybody a little bit better. You know, it's difficult to always talk about everything on our channels, but I'm hoping this gives everybody a little bit of interest in these collaborations and just talking about what they what they are passionate about outside of even just no it's fun i mean it's it's cliche because you don't show up to someone's show them like oh this sucks but no it's fun to do i know honestly it is so i hope uh, it's yep. a good conversation for the viewers as well and uh, let's jump into it my friend awesome well we can go ahead and get get it kicked off with the first question which i think everybody kind of already knows about you but i know you're very passionate about the cashback side of the credit card game so i guess my first question would be right off the bat what makes you choose team cashback over team travel uh there's a few things so i I'm not anti-travel. Like I went through a phase where I was trying to go through, like go to like every single state. I only have like most of the boring ones left though. Uh, so that kind of fizzled out, <laughs> but I was traveling a decent amount uh, a few times a year, maybe six to 10 between work and, and just personal. But it's a few things is one, when I go places, I'm not like going for like the, the ask Sebi, we went to the Maldives or we stayed at like the Conrad or things like that. I was always trying to get my points to stretch out as far as possible. So, you know, I'd stay in like famously like some Marriott's that were like, I don't know, 12,000 points to redeem, which is like a category one or category zero, something like that. But I thought, you know, I'd, I'd rather just stretch my points out instead of just having like one epic thing, just go as many places as I could. And also I never like to spend too much time in the hotel room. Like I've personally never turned on a television in a hotel room. Like I've been with people who do, and I've always found it weird, but the time should be spent out doing things, exploring. So I didn't really see a need to to go for that level of travel. And so when you're doing that, I was really just trying to not pay cash, really. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take a bath on my redemptions, right? Like, you know, I'll do the yeah. math just for fun. But as long as I really wasn't paying cash and it wasn't a terrible redemption, mm -hmm. I'd be fine with it. And then honestly, the other part is ever since I started doing the bank account stuff seriously, which I know we'll get into a little bit later, like I really got just obsessed with like how much money can I really take from banks uh, between the bonuses, the cards, the referrals, and became kind of an obsession. And so, you know, between those two things, that's how I travel, the type of travel and that, I was like, you know, I'm not getting nearly enough value out of these travel cards, 
to to you know keep them around. Let me just see if I can just switch and then you know better build out a cashback setup. Plus, I do believe you can still do a little bit of travel with cashback cards. Uh, it's less glamorous, but you know you can always buy your Delta gift cards you know, in a 5% category or something like that. And it's kind of a similar thing. So that was kind of what led me to go this hardcore. Exactly. I think everybody has a little bit of a different strategy when it comes to travel. I think obviously a lot of people are very passionate about the travel side of the credit card game because you can get such high redemptions for your points. But at the same time, what I've found a lot of times to be the case is that if you don't actually take the time to use your points and go redeem them, like they just kind of sit there and they're not really doing anything for you. So I think it's important to realize that cashback can be very helpful in just actually being able to use your your points that you earn no that's that's well said i think a lot of it is how much work are you going to put into the redemptions and then a lot of those redemptions you know the people we see are getting them because they have the jobs and the, and the lifestyles where they can leave on a tuesday and come back on a thursday or, or what have you midweek most of us are still bound to like you might take a friday off but you want that friday saturday sunday so you can be back to work on monday mm-hmm. and you know that you know, travel companies know that right so it's not going to be uh, the best redemptions there but i was i started in cash backs like the first one i remember is like if you go back to like i think my first freedom cards is like 2013 on it mm-hmm. and it's funny because obviously i'm known for just wearing the same shirt but i have a closet full of the suits and, and stuff you need to be a banker and I was trying to buy these these custom dress. It is there's, there's not a, a non pretentious way to say this, but like you know, you go to a suit guy and they measure you up. You get your name on the cuff and everything, right? And so like I don't know, shirts probably I don't know, hundred fifty, two hundred dollars a piece, something like that. And it's a shame they just all sit in the closet now. But um, I, I remember it was like, well, you mean I tell me I can get this Chase card, buy this thing I'm already gonna buy, and that'll basically be like a free shirt. Sign yeah. me up, and like that was like the original start. So you want to go back to the beginning, um, that was kind of the original start of it, and it just kind of progressively got worse from there, or better depending on how you look at it. Right, right, yeah. I think it's important to note that there are a lot of people out there. I feel like like yourself who really value the like tangible aspect of redeeming points, and that's what I think yeah. travel has a lot less of. Like, not saying. In a, like in a bad way, but I'm saying whenever you go to redeem for travel, all the points I have sitting in my account right now kind of don't really have an actual like redemption value because I haven't used them yet. And half the time, if you're not using them, they're never going to have any kind of value. So cashback is one of those things where you know exactly what you're getting, you spend, and you can actually go use those points to redeem for cashback and get something of value to you, which is pretty cool. All right, but I, I know I'm wrong, right? Because you, you listen to everyone who's you know older in life, like getting older now, and you know they always say you know it's it's the memories and the journey and the doing stuff. I'm still kind of like a material person um, in the fact, fa- not so much that I love things, but. I look at it as like, okay, I've spent the points or spent the money and I want like a third monitor because you, why not just need a third one. But I'll have that monitor tomorrow, the next day and the next day. Like once the trip's over, I'm like, all right, well, I don't have the money on the trip's over. I'm like, yes, you have the memories and the pictures, but you know, I know that's the wrong way to look at it. But if we're just honest about who we are, I'm like, that's another reason I lean more towards cash back. It still fits the things I'm going after. It's kind of like I always put like, you know, I'm not a foodie because – you know, you go to a nice restaurant, pay more, and I ate the food and I spent the money. And three hours later, I'm hungry and I do it all over again. Well, I might as well just eat the frozen pizza and save the money. We're going to end <laughs> in the same spot. I mean, you know, I, I think it's wrong. I'm on the wrong side of it. I know that, but I just think I know who I am, I guess. Right. I think that's definitely something that stuck out to me about your channel is that you aren't one afraid to like speak what you actually feel about, you know, this difference between travel and cash back. And you're very just like blunt about why you use your cards the way you do, which a lot of us can easily fall victim to being like, hey, these cards give you the most value. They give you the most points. But for some people, they really don't make it like make any sense for them to get. So I think cash back yeah, has a really good place. I appreciate, it. I appreciate it. I think it's one of those things where, you know, it's those cards are good, right? There's a red note we'll into, you know, some of them by name later, but you know, they're, they're not that they're bad cards, but it's, you know, who is this card for? And, you know, we see a lot of folks on our platform talking and generally saying the same thing. And there's a reason because like, I believe them and those cards are objectively good, but everyone watching can't really feel that way. So I felt this important. I started to start, start taking it seriously. You know, you start getting a little bit more comments and engagement. I was like, mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, we can say not financial advice. It's in a credit card, not the most important thing in the world, but people are going to make their decision off of partly what you're saying. I was like, well, 
I should at least put out my perspective and, you know, so be it. It's not going to be for everyone, but at least someone will be like, okay, I also feel that way. And then maybe if you feel a little bit better, like it's okay to just love buying copious amounts of gift cards to stack your desk with as many Apple monitors as you can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. That the other cool thing that I really do love about cashback setups is that you can build out like a very thorough, like 5% back setup on basically every purchase, which I know, you know, Luke from Luke's points and miles has kind of termed the whole five X all things, right? Mr. Five X all things. Yeah. And that's a, that is something that interests me because it's such a like mathematical fun game. I feel like to play to like, I mean, use this card in this category, this card in this one rather than just trying to accumulate like one point ecosystem, you're kind of just using any card you can to get you 5X. It is. That's kind of why I like it because it, it opens you up and like you can get four to five percent on most things even me i'm getting away from doing like the visa reload gift cards those are getting really hard to unload these days yeah. kind of diminishing returns but you know if you open yourself up to even the major issuers between you know the top five you can usually get five percent if you really want to go out and try to find all those elon max cash cards that you know in the local credit unions i mean you, you got a ton of options exactly i guess speaking of those options we might as well segue into the next question i have here which is just the general credit card consumer not necessarily your personal choice but what would you say some of the best cashback credit cards are for just anybody out there uh general ones i mean i think you can't go wrong depending on how much people care which is a flat two percent card is that if nothing else, most people only want one card. Um, I think, believe it or not, the Apple card's good for a lot of people. Yeah. I wouldn't get it, but I think for a lot of for what people want, they want the mobile pay, they want you know just an easy to use thing. I think that is actually a good cashback card for people. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's obligatory chase, probably the Freedom Unlimited. Honestly, because I do think most people get tired of the rotating categories. You know, it's not really that hard, but I think. You know, you get a lot on that card. And then I think the saver, the no annual fee saver card from Capital One is underrated right. um, as well. That's a pretty no, it's a pretty underrated card, especially in the early game when you can yep. get in Capital One's nicer. And then uh, you could, I get annoyed at US Bank because uh, they're redemption rules. But if you're just talking about just regular people, I think the Altitude Go is a good one as well because they're not going to care that there's a 25 minute increment redemption on point or cash backs. So I don't think they could, they'd care. Most people would care about that. Um, but I think, yeah, I think a lot of people get tired of the rotating stuff. So I think for most people, they want one or two simple mm -hmm. things. I think those would be good options to start and then we see how you like that and then go from there yeah no i agree i think i usually generally like recommend people to get the chase freedom unlimited if i know that they're probably not going to be super into the credit card game and they just want one that maybe eventually they do end up liking the credit card game a lot and want to get a sapphire card and then transfer their points out to travel partners but for just like a general catch-all card, I do like the Chase Freedom Unlimited a lot, even over the two percent cards, which may just be a me thing. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I don't mean I don't, you know, two percent for whatever reason, two percent seems to be the number that it works. Anything higher than two percent, it must look like the system behind the scenes must break. You right. know, I mean, there are cards that go higher, but you know, like Affinity. No, it's um, Alliant has the 2.5 card, but I mean, it requires you know to have like what a thousand dollars with them on deposit at all times to make it work for them so uh for most people though, i think you know here i can use this card it's two percent it's good enough um all but right. again I, if i could get you to get someone to use that card in conjunction with maybe a dining card like the saver or the altitude go i think they'd be in business and they'd be open to having two cards and the altitude is does it get it's got it's a, the restaurants i think there's groceries on it too i think I can't remember off the top. I should know, but I guess another question would be, what's your opinion on the on the autograph card with Wells Fargo? I know a lot of people. Oh, that don't is really a good like one. It. I should have mentioned that one. That is a good. It's a good call. Uh, I do like it. Uh, I think they cause didn't they just recently change it so that you can just redeem like any amount of like cash back. I think that was the new change. I wrote I about so. this. I should know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's a good all arounder for a lot of people. Again, like if you're and have a ton of cards then like you know for me like no nah, i can do better in a lot of those multipliers but that's a good call if you wanted that one i know wells fargo is one of those you know it's highly debated you know people yeah. people it's polarizing i guess is the word right but honestly if you want to go active cash and then 
autograph. I think it's actually a really good setup. You know, we even, I mean, I really want them to slightly off topic, but I mean, even the built rewards, like I really want them to make them in one giant family and then you, and you really have something. No autograph is, is good. I mean, I still to this day don't know why they killed the propel um, mm-hmm. just to bring it back again. Um, it was kind of a weird move. Yeah. So, but no, it's a good car. I almost wonder if like it was, I, my original thought when the propel was like, it was too good it was working out too well for the mm-hmm. consumer because wells fargo had those real rules where like you could get only get a bonus like once every 18 months but there wasn't really anything else to cross sell you so yeah. once you had it you're like well where do i go in their system so no autograph's a good call that's a good call yes that would be a good uh like one to two to three card setup for like your you're you know, a regular person yeah exactly that's one that i always like i'm hesitant to bring up but i do actually i mean just because people don't like Wells Fargo, I personally haven't been like, you know, made really upset by them or anything. But I know people have like a disdain for them in a way. I just think that it that with the active cash could be a really good duo um, that could be considered. Oh, you're right. They don't really. Plus, have... they've got more coming. I got I, I, their their rollout got delayed. Um, you know, and I, it's easy to get. I guess I mean I wasn't necessarily affected by what they did. Um, they keep doing stuff is the problem. But and again, it's like find me the bank that doesn't keep doing stuff you know like bank of america just had an issue with like zelle payments missing and their answer was like just come back later that's not okay i mean is it up there with fraud no but uh there's this common theme where banks just tend to like treat you however they want so long as it's documented in their process and procedure that they're doing the right thing so i don't know i don't mean to get desensitized to it but the u.s bank had something similar and like no one cared um yeah so i i don't know a little bias i guess <laughs> I, I i don't have a good answer on the wells fargo thing i mean i still open their bank accounts i have a wells fargo business card that i got for a bonus uh if i was in the market would i get an, an autograph like yeah i probably would Would i say it like with confidence like i'm behind this bank like no i wouldn't say that but say i'm here to use their product and we're just gonna have to keep an eye on them i guess but you know i'm skeptical of all banks honestly so yeah, that's true. Speaking of just the cards that you would actually use in your day to day life on a you know a little bit different than just what you'd recommend to everybody, what are three cashback cards that you like personally really enjoy that maybe people don't talk about enough? Yeah, I will talk about them a lot. Well, I said the custom cash is talked about a lot, I think, but that's become just my core gas card. I think that's a really underrated card. So much so that you're still surprised that City came up with it because City does City things sometimes. The Huntington Business Voice, I've talked about a lot. Huntington is a regional bank, so I don't think I don't think they're out in Texas, unfortunately. But you, you can get it if you apply. You have to apply in branch no matter what. Uh, but that's a 4% um, on one category a quarter, up to $7,000 in spend and like groceries is a category. So mm. that one's a pretty good one that I was happy that I picked up as well. And then I still have to go freedom. I'm up to like yeah. four freedom cards now, honestly. Yeah. I don't mind doing the gift card thing. Um, I really don't because I'm usually out of place and it's fine that, that has gift cards. So I mean, I mean, I mean, everyone talks about those, but I think the hunting and voice would be like my odd man out when i talk to some people they're like what is that car I'm like that's that's a good yep. one or i don't have it yet but you could also go pnc cash rewards um i think they're in texas but they're weird because sometimes they're in texas but sometimes they won't let you open business accounts out there but mm. personally you can but they've been they're green their other cards are like weirdly the the math is really weird on them but their green one the cash rewards is like a four percent on gas and a few other things up to like eight grand a year so you, but just use it on gas and like you're good to go like that's another right. like sleeper gem of a card i don't have it yet but i put that in there as well yeah i do remember i guess tracking back a little bit just so we can cover it if people don't know when you say like the whole gift card thing with the freedoms oh yeah can you explain that real quick <laughs> yeah so you know so it, it doesn't have to just be with freedoms right but any ca- any category cards like your discovery cash even your custom cash you know you've got the 5x back on a set category or you know few categories each quarter and then they rotate um, up to like fifteen hundred dollars in spend per quarter and combined purchases uh, so what a lot of us will do is you know we'll go buy either let's just say the category was like grocery stores right so grocery stores have a wide selection of like store gift cards so like when i bought we were talking about these monitors earlier and i bought them i just bought a ton of apple gift cards because i've got four 
freedom cards, right? And you know, I'm never going to use all of that at grocery stores or gas stations or what have you. So you just basically you just lock in your 5% over there, then come use your store gift card on, you know, whatever you were going to buy. Now, people can also do the visa reloads. There's an activation fee on those. If you really want to get into it, a lot of people love to take the ink cash card, which is 5% back at office supply stores. And then sometimes Staples and Office Max, the ones that haven't gone out of business yet, will, uh, run promotions on those where they waive the activation fee. But those are really hard to liquidate because people really want to have the manufacturer spend that, which is just buy something and liquidate it for the cash. Uh, and it's getting harder to do, but that's probably next level stuff. But that's the gift card, high level, that's the gift card play. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I remember whenever I first like stumbled on your channel, I saw a video where you were talking about how you had like four OG Chase Freedoms or original Chase Freedom cards, which that's a big hack that I've, talked about on my channel mainly because of what you taught me on that topic but for those of y'all that i guess don't know it's basically that you were initially allowed to product change your any of your chase cards that earn chase ultimate rewards points into the original chase freedom card that's no longer able to be applied for but they've recently from what i've known shut that down which is unfortunate because now if you want a product change to a lower tier card with chase it has to be either the freedom flex or the freedom unlimited which then kind of takes up that spot if you were trying to just turn those bonuses basically over and over. So. Yeah. And so it seems like depends on who you talk to. Like they told me, so if we want to go to my, so I had the OG freedom from 2013 from dress shirt day that we talked about. Um, then eventually I applied for the freedom flex, like normal. I product changed a Sapphire reserve to a OG freedom. And that was like this past spring. Mm -hmm. And I called in again recently to product change my freedom unlimited to an OG freedom, kind of like what you were just talking about, right. you know, so to get in line for the bonus again. And the, the guy was like, no, you can't. And I could have like called back and pro if I called enough, I probably could have gotten it. Right. So I've heard some people still get it, but I was like, fine. They, so I said two freedom flexes, two OG freedoms. Uh, but yeah, that used to be the move, but that's why I kind of like chase because you know, you can bounce all over. They don't, they don't even care. Like they're like, right. sure done we'll mail you a new one whatever yeah that's interesting to me because i would imagine that to a certain degree they would stop giving you you know allowing you to do those product changes but i guess if you're constantly applying for more cards with them they're just happy to, to have the business and as well, long they as they tried spending. uh they, they there was a i it didn't happen to me but i remember credit shifu and now ben hedges he had a video out where where chase was going through when people who had multiple freedoms they were like we're upgrading this card to a mm -hmm. freedom unlimited but if you caught it and called in they would switch it back like they switched his back but there was a minute or two where they were trying to i think go through and yeah. like an upgrade come on i think they're more of a there's no limit to how many chase cards you can have i think they're more of like a credit limit based ones and how much credit they're going to extend you but they've also i haven't seen this myself but i know we had a story on it maybe a year ago where they are rolling out something where like at application if you have existing chase cards they would allow you on the spot to move around credit limit so they're not extending the, any more risk on their side still giving you the cards you want so everyone kind of wins i haven't seen that yet but at least i think that's what they were doing yeah that's interesting and i guess speaking of chase i feel like you can't talk about chase without talking about <laughs> amex as well and i know oh i knew were... i knew it had to come up at some point <laughs> I, I should act like i'm just being ambushed i mean i would tell people behind the scenes we do a pre-show meeting uh but I, i'm just gonna act like i'm just being ambushed with this <laughs> right <laughs> I feel like if I, I would do a disservice to all the, the viewers if I didn't ask, but I think at this point you've kind of made yourself a little bit well known for not exactly loving Amex. So can you explain a little bit more about why you're not a big fan of Amex like the rest of us? Yeah, so I think I've, I've gotten the, the label as the anti-Amex person. There are things that Amex does that I like. I think their customer service is top notch. Going through their chat feature is great. Other companies, the other tech companies don't have the capability that they have on chat, honestly. Um, my whole issue with Amex is objectively, you know, I think their cards are fine for the right people. Like everything, like, you know, the right person with this thing is fine. Like I wouldn't recommend a MacBook Pro to everyone, even though that's what I use. Most people would be fine with the MacBook Air. But, you know, for a lot of people, they're fine. But I think for many, many more people, they're actually not fine. And I think we end up, Amex spends a lot of money as all brands do on marketing and brand and image. But Amex is way better at it than a lot of people um, to the point where you tell someone what you do and how many cards you have, you know, like, what, do you have Amex cards? Like, yeah, they're just right. cards, man. And so I think the up. thing, yeah. Like, so I think the thing we get wrong is we, 
like how much are we really going to change our behavior for Amex cards, right? Like if you want to go around a credit or two and say, okay, half value, then like fine. But, you know, for a lot of us, we end up having to really make excuses to make the Amex cards work. I think they're expensive. Uh, the gold card is their best card. I'll stand by that. The platinum card is the best card for lounge access just about, although I think the Venture X could make a serious run. But I don't like their business model for the Platinum card. I, I don't like that they just keep loading on these credits or coupons, as they're affectionately known as, and no other core core benefits. And they just stripped out a core benefit, which is bringing your guests, two guests with you, to the Centurion Lounge. And then now they're offering it back to some people as a perk. Like, we'll just let you do it. Like, hmm. that's not a perk. You just took it away from us. And you're trying to solve a problem that you created I don't yeah. know. You told me this lounge is awesome. You invited me. You invited everyone. Now you're fooling. Like, who travels by themselves? Most people yeah. don't. And I understand they want to cross sell cards, but you get that. I mean, you get their wording is weird. Are they charged cards? Are they not charged cards? They stop using that language mysteriously for some reason, mm. but they're still technically charged cards. Seems a little misleading. Um, so I go on and on, but I, I so I, for me, I think we could justify the platinum at five fifty. You could kind of do the math. We'll get to seven hundred. Like this is clearly not for me, and so I, I go a little bit hard on them. Not not to counteract anyone, because I I mean I mean the people who talk about the platinum, I believe them that they get all that value from it. I don't doubt anyone, but I think all you ever hear is like how amazing it is. I'm like I. I canceled. I thought about keeping mine because we talk about it so much. I was like, I could just put it on my taxes or whatever. I don't know if that's yeah. true, but I figured I could. But I was like, no, I have to cancel it because I have to set an example to tell people that it is okay if you don't want this card. Because I really did want it in the beginning. I thought that was the top card. I really did. Yeah. And I got it and I had it for two years. And like, this really isn't, it's really not for me. Yeah. It's a long rant. No, I think, I think it's a good, good thing to hear because <clears throat> even on my channel, like I still do talk very highly of Amex. And I think as a company, kind of like how we're both talking about, like they do have some really good things going for them. Their marketing, one of the best, if not, I think it's the best in the credit card game and then customer service too. But it's really important to realize that they're not for everybody. And what I've always said is that, if you're somebody that isn't going to one use your points for travel because without using them for travel they're really not worth much um if you're not going to use your points for travel or get positive value from those credits that come on those cards naturally then there's no way that they're really worth it for you even if you think that you should be getting it because everybody else is there's likely a better travel card out there for you if, if that's what you're looking for oh i agree i think that's what welcome offers are for every i yep. think everyone should get every Amex card at least once because there's not necessarily a reason to leave money on the table and you can probably find a quick transfer partner. I like their transfer partners better than Chase. I like uh, Delta and mm. Hilton that they have. So get the cards at least once. I will get more MR point cards at some point because it just doesn't make sense to leave money on the table, but then don't stick around and try to, you know, keep it. And you think about their marketing. I mean, Chase has Kevin Hart screaming outside and he's <laughs> hilarious, but you know, I, I'm sure they can't use half his material in like as a regular commercial. But then Amex says that, you know, don't live life without it. it. It's just it's totally different. And you know, it's fine that they don't want everyone as their customer Chase. Even City, even Bank of America to a degree, they're more like an everyman card, which I think is fine. Amex, they can't say no to people. And of course, that image and that branding makes people want to come into it. Uh, but you know, that was part of the fee hike, in my opinion. I think they wanted to get a lot of people to just go away um, yeah. when they hiked it up. So, I mean, it works. I just think, I think we don't tell the full story. And a lot of times with math, you know, it's really easy to say, well, math, either it is or it isn't. And Yes, that is true. Positive expected value or not, but we don't tell the full story by factoring in all that marketing and all that branding in the way having those metal cards make people feel. Um, and that's real, you know, should it be? I mean, probably not, but it is, it is, it's a real thing. And yeah. we have to talk about that part of it. And I don't think we do. Yeah. I guess coming off of that question, I feel like Something that could be interesting as a cashback guy would be to, again, this might not make sense because if you don't use the credits, like I said, you're not going to get positive value either way. But did you ever get like the Charles Schwab version of the platinum card and try to use it as like as a cashback setup? Use your Amex cards as a cashback setup or no? Uh, I haven't gotten the, the Schwab one yet. Um, I mean, because 
people would talk about that when it didn't it used to be like what 1.25 something like that before it got nerfed down like 1.1 i still think it's a hard play because you have to because all the cards you'd have to earn those mr points with and you're not really getting even if you just put like a few of the credits at like half value yeah i i don't even know if it'd be worth your time honestly now that's 1.1 i mean i think there's a play to be had where you can you know the Schwab Platinum is your end game and you've worked through all the uh, Platinum, all the MR cards. And maybe you have the, the Blue Business Plus as your no annual fee to hold those. Yep. And then at the end of it, you go Schwab and cash them out. I mean, then maybe, but you can tell Amex, like, because I was messing around with getting a legitimate business checking account, right? We were talking about this. And I ended up with an American Express checking account, which will make people laugh. But I was looking for an account that I wasn't going to churn, right, um, yep. to just get the bonus. I know we're going to talk about this, too, if it doesn't make sense to folks right now. But the point is, you know, they're like, even then, at MR points, you can cast them out at 0 0.8 cents on a checking account. I think it comes up to one cent if you had the business platinum. But you can tell they really have no interest in you cashing these things out or using them any other way but uh, for travel. And even, I mean, they kind of still downplay travel partners. Honestly, they really just want you to their travel portal. Um, you know, at least where, you know, Chase is at least in your face. But yeah, they push the travel portal more, but there's at least benefit if you have the right card going yep. to the travel portal. And Amex, I do think they bury the lead on, it's not hardest thing in the world, right? But you do have to know what you're doing um, yep. to get value. They, they don't talk about that at all. So, no. you know, there, there's also that. So, yeah, again, I, I got the blue business cash card because I had a good sign up bonus. I'm going to get it and, you know, whatever. I, so just, I don't wouldn't leave money on the table, but, you know, I'd tell people, try the card. If you think it's for you, try it because that's what a welcome yep. offer is for. I don't want to scare anyone off from a card. And I don't think just because I say, we, we talked about how I travel early on too, right? Yep. You know, lounges, they look nice. I just talked about the the new Seattle one. The Sunday mm -hmm. recapture. It looks really nice, but we talk about lounges like like they're a restaurant we go to down the street every week. It's not the case. I mean, how many? I talk to a lot of people in, in comments who are like, you know, for being honest, like I'll go into the lounge because I can to yep. get food or a snack or something. And you know, how do you value that? Like, I don't know. Like that. That's the tough part. Right. Yeah. I completely agree with that. I think like we're talking about, Amex does a great job at marketing themselves as this like luxury you know, credit card brand that everybody should have at some point. And they pitch it. I feel like they do pitch it almost as a travel card, but I still know like a lot of people, a lot of people's parents that I've seen that will use the platinum card for like every single purchase that they make. And then I imagine that they're not really using them for travel. I imagine they're probably cashing them out too, because they just don't care to learn. And that hurts me because I mean, as we both know, <laughs> platinum card is not really an earning card. And it's While not. it does look cool to swipe it, I, I don't know. I care more about the the value. <laughs> but you think that it, but like the average person would think that it would be because like it's a nice right. car, solid. Why would I not want to use this all the time, right? And plus, they, we've all gotten creative in our sign up bonuses. Where I don't know if they're still doing it, but they had it for a while where they would give you a high multiplier like gas stations or groceries or something mm -hmm. that ordinarily wouldn't work, but they, you know, but they do it for a long time, like six months to condition right. you to use that card in other places. The answer to me for the platinum is always, I'd be in on the platinum if it simply absorbed the green card. I yeah. hate the green card. <laughs> the reason I hate the green card is because it only exists the, the kryptonite color to nerf the gold and the platinum. Like mm -hmm. that's the thing. Like, it's a travel card. We're just going to get going on this. So if you're thinking about the makeup <laughs> of the Platinum card, we're like, okay, 5X back on airlines is really good, and you can do it direct. I give you 5X back on hotels booked through the Amex travel portal. The problem with that, as you know, if you go through a travel portal, hotels don't like to honor your status. Well, wouldn't mm -hmm. you know it? You get Marriott and Hilton Gold, and look who's not going to want to honor it. Or you're going to have to go to the desk and get it added, you know... <laughs> Like that, they didn't think that, but well, they thought it through. Um, it's the yeah. problem, right? They're smart people. But things like that, I look at, I'm like, this isn't, this isn't right. You could do right. a little bit better. Right. Yeah, I've seen, there is a big fandom for the green card out there. I, I mean, oh, I know. I get harassed by them all the time. And I, as I imagine I will now, but. 
<laughs> it's not personal. It's just, you just exist. You clearly exist for a certain reason, and it makes me right. mad. On its yeah. own, it's, it's, it, I don't know if it should be $150, especially with the eh, – I mean, they did, they did make the clear credit a full credit now, which does help. You know, yeah, It seems like kind of pennies on the dollar at that point, though, whenever you – know. I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> Oh, I, I get it. I know people like the green, but it, it, it should just, the platinum should just have more, more substance. Yeah. And I think going back to that whole monthly credit thing that they do, it's obviously very smart from a business perspective to keep people constantly using your cards. And Amex loves to see you using their cards. But for consumers, it is one of the most annoying things, I feel like. I mean, that's one of the reasons I haven't got the platinum card. One, because I just can't justify with my travel habits right now. I'm not going to get. of value a year from that card. But at the same time, being able or having to always use monthly credits would be a big pain to me. And I have, you know, with my gold card, I have two monthly credits. And I'm like, even those I forget to use sometimes, I feel like until like the last day. And then I'm like, oh, got to get two Grubhub orders here or whatever Uber Eats. The Uber (laughs) Eats thing would literally make me mad when I had to use it, right? So I live in suburbia, man. So I don't live in Detroit. I'm like maybe 20, maybe 35 minutes from Detroit, right? But we can all claim Motor City, right? Pistons right. wear on their uniforms. We, the, the question isn't, are you driving? It's which car are you driving, right? In most of America, I think it's like in I only have one car, but you, know, you get the point. Like there's a lot of people like multiple cars. It's like what you do. Um, and so I drive past like so many different restaurants to get to one to do pickup because you know I'm not doing delivery. It would make me angry uh, to use it. But we know it works. Like I'm not, ma- I, I can't make fun of their business model because it works. And we know it right. works because they're continuing with the elevated offers now. It used to be 60K, 100K would be a unicorn. You can find 125 all day long now, sometimes as high as 150s, right? So it's working. Um, but, I, you know, because you're just outsourcing this stuff to the, to the vendors. But, you know, from Uber's standpoint, we saw what happened with DoorDash. Like when DoorDash partnered with Chase, they're like the first year, two years, they're like, here's 60 bucks, use it whenever. And we didn't really get that mad. So it's like, fine, because I did it. I was like, oh, I got to use this. I bought like $60 worth of pizza from mm-hmm. the place. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, salad. Um, <laughs> just uh, did that. So it's fine. But, you know, now if I'm Uber, I get. 12 touch points a year with you and you're i'm probably going to enable notifications so you can know when your food's done so it works for them um you know and i again like they're also not I, i've described it like this like you've done like work travel right you, you can either do expense reports you can get per diem like if you ever travel with people who get per diem some people get per diem and they look at it as a coupon for dinner right. so i i would normally get this piece of cake but now I'm going to because the company's paying for it. You have other people who are like, well, I'm going to eat breakfast at the hotel, lunch at the client spot, and like the cheapest thing possible, and I'll pocket this extra money, right? right. You'll never guess which one I would do. But <laughs> like that, the Platinum Card wants the first guy, not the second guy. They're like, yeah, exactly. maybe I use them, maybe I don't. And that's all, you know, because p- some people watching this are like, dude, stop complaining. Well, that's great. The card is for you, and that's fantastic. Yes, and you should yeah. continue to use it, especially if you're a road warrior. Like, I've known road warriors, worked with them. And at that point, it's anything that makes the airport better, man, because they're facing a lot more delays. And, I, I mean, I've been delayed. We've all been delayed, but like it's an inconvenience. But like if you could literally be delayed, you know, every time you're going to the office, which is your airport, then yeah, by all means, have the card. It's for you. Um, you know, most of us, and I'll say this I mean, I don't want to spend this much time on the topic, but I'll say this. I mean, one, it's also part of like wanting that lifestyle a little bit. Yeah. No one looks mad in Amex commercial, man. And in travel always, you know, riding on a plane sucks, right? We say traveling is fun. Getting to your destination is fun. Traveling is uncomfortable and sucks. Uh, yeah. But we all aspire to have that life where I turn left on the plane instead of right. Mm-hmm. That's how you really know. And having that card kind of puts you in that mindset of like, dude, I can go into any of these lounges. Even though when you get in the lounge, like, well, there's a really long line food's not that awesome do i even like the food that they have i mean you travel with a picky person you may end up in line in the concourse still right uh so you know the the nuances we don't normally talk about but i i I think it works and hats off to them because it does work so i only ever wanted to go aggressive on it to tell the other side of it Uh, but i'll end up with the business platinum at one point i'll have the schwab platinum and people will freak out but i'm saying it now there's still money to be had for year one so you shouldn't skip them but you know just don't try to force yourself into them long term 
Yeah. I mean, like you're saying, it's, it is a card that is great for the right person. And that's, that's the important thing to note is that even like somebody like me, I could do the work to make it, make myself the right person. But I think something I try to preach on, on my channel is just that you need to be able to get value from these things naturally. And a lot of times you're going to let the marketing fool you into keeping this card for longer than you should, because you'll get it for the first year and feel really cool about the one or two times you used a, a lounge. And well, I guess now you couldn't even bring your spouse in there, but <laughs> you might, you might feel really cool about that and keep the card open for a longer period of time, even though it doesn't make sense. But like you're saying, I think it's important to note that it's right for the right people, but it's also wrong for a lot of people that do have the card. So it's just, it's just a contrarian belief that I think is important to put out there too. Yeah. There's other options. I mean, like, there's, Again, lounge buddies owned by Amex, but you can get day passes. I don't think anyone should buy like priority pass membership outright. But one, you got to figure out your airport routes and see. I mean, cars with priority pass. And there are good priority pass lounges. There are not so good ones. Um, but you know, that could be better. You can get priority pass like really cheap now on a lot of a lot of other cards. So Centurion Lounge Network isn't they're expanding it, but like if you look at globally, then sure, but like like just domestically, it's like not that big. True. Really. True. I mean, you'd have a you know. I think they end up winning because they have the Delta Sky Club partnership. And that's really, you know, the only way to get in now that they change it. So you're going to spend a ton of money with Delta. But yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's really it. Just, you know, because it is weird because you're like, well, this is all we talk about is Amex. And, you know, I do, I, I've gone a long time without doing like a dedicated Amex topic. Like it, it yeah. shows, like you can tell, like people, it gets views, it gets numbers, right? So, right. Um, I don't know. I've just become the guys, like, I've talked about other stuff and yeah. when appropriate, when necessary, when they're in the news, I'll happily talk about it. Uh, if right. you have the card, that's great. I, I'm happy for you. You should use it. But, you know, just so long as we're, you know, just being honest with ourselves. So, and I tell my story, I thought it was the end all be all cards. It just, uh, when they hit $700, like, I couldn't fake it anymore. It's like, I can't. I can't. Yep. Yep. No, I, I get that. I, I appreciate that you do that on your channel. So I just, I mean, I think it's important to talk about, it, even if we talk about it for a long time, but on the same, on the same note, I do want to let you talk a little bit more about your other passions. And one of the biggest ones being bank account bonus hunting, which you have a oh, second yes. channel for, which is called run on the bank. But just in line with our questions here, what got you started in the bank account bonus game? Uh, so I always knew it was a thing that people did and I would do it here or there and then, so I was maybe 2020 was the first year I started doing it. Like I would say professionally, like tracking it all. There's another guy on YouTube called John. His, his channel's bank account bonus central. He was actually the first person to focus on like just bank. I mean, he does credit cards too, but like every day he like, here's a new bank bonus. So I think I had done a power rankings video. Um, just like credit cards or something. And he, he messaged me. He's like, Hey, that's a cool thing. Do you want to do something like what we're doing now? And I, I told him, I was like, I didn't tell him this at the time. I was like, no, not really. I don't really you know. <laughs> It's a hassle. You you edit this one, so it's fine. It's easy. But like when you have to do the editing of a of a two a two man desk, it sucks. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So I really want to do it. But I did it. We were going to talk about something different. We we're going to talk about business cards. And uh all he he wouldn't shut up about his bank account bonuses. His words, not mine. Um, <laughs> and so finally, I was like, "All right, man, I'll try try one or two. And then, like, so I think I signed up like four or five in like one day. Um, and then I just kind of kept going with it because it really is easy. It's easy money. So for those who don't know, just as everyone's in on the question, you know, much like credit card, credit card churning, right? You sign up, banks will pay you to open up deposit accounts, checking, savings, money markets, you name it, brokerage accounts. And so that'll list out terms and conditions. So it'll be like, hey, open up a brand new account, direct deposit a thousand dollars. Use the debit card 10 times and we'll pay you two, three hundred dollars, something like that. And it's really easy because you don't have to spend any money. I mean, the debit card swipes, but there's ways to easily do that. But the difference is between credit cards is 99% of times there's no credit inquiry and then they're churnable at a much faster clip. I mean, some of these you can do like once per year. Right. Some of them get out there like Capital One's like every three years. But most of the time they're talking about you could be a new customer. I means I can close it and then reopen the account in like 
six, eight months, something like that. So you just keep returning the same accounts over and over again, year after year. So the first year I think I played it, I think I ended up, John's goal is making $10,000. Uh, so I was like, all right, I'll make that my goal too. Yeah. I got it. So then I was like, well, let me separate it out. So 10 grand, just bonus hunting, no credit cards. And then last year I did about 12,000, but I played really aggressively. Like I will, I've opened accounts for like $5. Uh, yeah there i have no shame uh, but it's a lot of fun it's, it's like it's like a it's the same as you know how you described the, the, the getting the 5x cards right yeah. like a, i don't know if we're talking about chess maybe checkers right like a checkers game of like where's my direct deposit going this year or this week right always having your direct deposit go somewhere or in you know in lockdown days they all made sense because there were no high returns right so you could have an account say give me 10 grand and i'll give you five hundred dollars in three months it almost always made sense now you got to do a little bit more math because there are higher yield accounts are back but it became a chess game of how do i get to my 10 grand number like every year Mm -hmm. i have a ton of fun doing it yeah it seems like it's something that can be more profitable than than the credit card game in a lot of ways because of that ability to just constantly be applying for them and i definitely recommend anybody that's interested in it to go check out your second channel run on the bank and i've always been a fan of like watching your end of year recap video or just like one where you're showing what you've done too because it's pretty insane to see like the spreadsheet you have for it and how you track it and how many accounts you can apply for I guess just out of curiosity, so people know, how many accounts did you open, you think, this last year? Or I guess you might know. Oh, last year? Uh, I can tell you. Um, so I, uh, I track it. If you need a spreadsheet, I have one that you can download. It's free and edit it to your heart's content. So in 21, I, 21 was the first year I tracked it, I guess. That was 69 accounts. 22 was 51 accounts. And as it sits now... We're taping February 19th. I've got 11 open and I'm looking at one on the radar to do. So I track it all. I've got, again, I've got, if you go over there, I appreciate the plug. I've got a spreadsheet. You can download mine. There's a one-on-one section where you can go through. It's like, here's how to play. If you just reach out to me, I'll get you an easy one to start just so you can see how it works. But essentially it's just read the stuff that they bury in fine print, you know, the terms and conditions, like that's the roadmap to taking their money. So you just read, learn how to read those, navigate those, and then you're good to go. And once you get a few under your belt, you know, you can play as aggressive as you want, really. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. I mean, you can't obviously do the the same velocity with credit cards. So it that is a way that right. can be much more profitable. And I think one thing that I was very curious about whenever I got started was the difference between whenever you have a hard pull on your, you know, your credit report, that's one thing. And that's why some people limit themselves to a certain amount of cards a year. But with bank account bonuses, I guess what grants you the ability to be able to apply for that many so quickly? Well, early on, like it's just free sailing, right? You're good to go. Now there is something called check systems, which is, it's amazing that no one knows about this. I mean, I didn't know about this. Um, I've worked at banks like for 10 years. I didn't know about this. Now, I wasn't in deposit accounts. I wasn't in retail banking. So maybe that's why I was in mortgage banking, uh, which this doesn't come up in mortgage banking as much. But anyways, check systems is almost like your credit report for deposit accounts, right? Mm -hmm. So some banks will pull checks as a measure to check your history. And it ranges, right? Because some are looking for Um, derogatory remarks did you close with a negative balance are you bouncing checks things like that if you're not they're like whatever fine come on because again the bank wants new accounts now some banks smaller regional banks especially credit unions um they are looking for just how many accounts did you open and close uh because that looks like usually money laundering or you're a churner right you know you can only deposit $10,000 $10,000 at a time, you know, rolling 12 months and they got to fill out a form. So people will go and open a bunch of different accounts. Right. Mm-hmm. I've almost been thrown out of a bank like last week for this, actually. Uh, <laughs> true story. <laughs> so that'll be a thing, but I don't let that stop me because I've, I've got home base accounts, like accounts that I'm never going to close uh, or my, I call hub accounts. Like so you're not going to be out of a banking home, but because of that, as long as you're closing accounts, you know, in the right way without a negative balance or anything, you know, you, you should be fine. Yes. You'll get some denial letters, but it's just part of the game. So I don't let that bother me personally. Not everyone, some people feel differently. That's, that's totally fine. 
you know, yeah. play at the speed that you're comfortable at. <laughs> but it's not like it's not a credit product, you know, so there is no hard pull. I mean, credit unions on occasion will pull credit, but it's rare. Yeah, yeah I think it's it's a little bit of a risk tolerance thing where it's, you know, some people can't stomach that if they're only in the credit card game and they can't. I don't know. I know some people that would be a little bit less apt to want to do that, but it is something I found very interesting that you can do that open and close so many accounts so quickly and, you know, still be in good standing with, with these banks. So I think, I think it's a very oh, good yeah. thing to do in combination. Bankers are your friend. Cards. Bankers are your friend. They want to open up new accounts. And I tell people like, I'm not a, not a rich man. Right. So, you know, I tell you, I got, you know, 11, 12 grand last year. That's the fun part. But then, you know, I'll tell people, well, the end of January, one of my houses, the furnace just it broke. It's a really long story, but it ended up with full on replacements, a thousand square foot house, like seventy eight hundred dollars, seventy seven hundred dollars. So I don't care how much money you have. You get that phone call, your eyes water a little bit, right? Yeah. So there's that. And then this coming Wednesday, I'm taking a check engine light and car comes on, taking mm-hmm. it in. That'd be the second trip. They're like, yeah, we're gonna have to keep it. So we'll get you a loaner car. So, you know, it's going to be expensive. So it's almost like I do this yes, because it's fun, but usually that money is going to basically shield me from these expenses that are coming up, you know, and yes, I mean, we can get into it. There are cheaper furnace options. Yes. It's going to go on my taxes, but that's next April. You still got to have the money up front. So, I mean, really, I think it's a nice addition to folks. If nothing goes wrong then fantastic, you can have some risk-free money to invest, keep building right. your bankroll and bonuses, pay off a bill, what have you. But it just gives you that extra flexibility or that extra shield when these things come up. I mean, that's a lot of money, man. And yes, I got a yeah. new credit card to you know, get a bonus, of course, but you know, I just about half that money was gone in the span of like three weeks, but that's it's right. money and that's what it's for. But I'm glad I did it, played yep. at that speed to have it, because then that protects from going towards your, you know, your salary money, you know. So that's yep. another way I look at it for people. And they, you know, people are like, how much work is it really? It's really not that much work, honestly. Um, yeah, it's really not. That's what I was I was about to hit on is the fact that I've done a few of them myself because of your channel. And I even texted you about a couple yesterday too, because I'm just still learning about the game, but it is something that you can do online for the most part. I mean, maybe you'll get a better bonus in you know, certain places whenever you go in branch to do it, or you have to go in branch to do it. But if you're someone that's casually doing it, you know, I get mailers all the time for, for checking accounts that they want me to sign up for. And they'll give me $300 for holding a thousand bucks in there for 30 days. And it's like, well, depending on how much you have sitting in your bank account or your emergency fund, you can just transfer over there for a little bit. You could just be making free money by not doing anything, just managing multiple accounts. But then again, if you're ending up closing them after those, those time periods are up, it's really not hard to manage when I've experienced yeah. it. No, that, no, that's what the spreadsheet is for. I kind of walk people through. I mean, there are people who honestly, I know who've told me, Hey, I look at the title of your video then I know what to go do from there. And they, right. they might be nice and play it just, you know, cause they know it's how you get credit for it. Uh, but if you're not that person, I put it all in chapters so you can go and get you whichever one you, whichever parts you need, walk yep. you through it in the one-on-one deal. Um, we've got the blog as well, where I also write out everything. And that one has a lot more bonuses. I'm only, I'm only doing two videos a week. So I'll try to put stuff that, you know, and you can search by state to see what you're eligible for. And, and everything but you know i tell people i mean you know we all know we're not gonna get rich off of this game no one's getting rich off of hunting bonuses right but i yeah. do think the easiest way to begin and in getting into finance in general is understanding credit and debt yeah. you understand credit cards you understand how credit works you understand that whole side of it you understand how deposit accounts work you start to understand how money flows through the system and then from there you get into the investing and stuff like that but this is a really good foundational piece and plus it, you know, we're going to be dealing with banks, talking to banks, and this gets you experience doing that, which you wouldn't think is a big deal, but you know, they have all the money. So we usually end up talking to them and dealing with them. Uh, so I think, yeah, we're just not going to get rich, but again, it, it helps and it, it's sure helping me right now this early in the year. Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm going to ask you a hard hitting question that I've actually, I think I've asked you in your Q&A before, and I've, I've heard your answer, but I want everybody else to hear it too. If you could only choose one between bank account bonuses or credit card sign-up bonuses, which one would you choose and why? I'd go bank accounts all yep. day, every single time. I think credit cards are fun. Uh, you know, using them both is great, but I can make way more money. I mean, I think for most people, as long as you can, you know, move your direct deposit around easily, 
uh, you know, and there's ways to fake direct deposits too. A lot of times they say direct deposit is a paycheck, but it can be other things. We just have to be creative and work together to find out what that is through crowdsource points. But I mean, I'm not complaining, but I don't have that much spend, right? Like I'm, I'm not wishing for my, the stuff that's broken already by the middle of February is more than enough for me. I'm yeah. good. But unless you're like, Hey, I run an ad agency and I'm just putting client bills on my card and getting reimbursed from it. I credit or, or bank account bonuses. You'll make a lot more money. You don't really have to spend anything. You can do it right from where I'm sitting right now. I choose to play aggressive and go hunt and go in branch and, and things like that, but you don't have to. Yeah. Um, so I think you do much better uh, bank account bonus wise. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I think it makes a lot of sense to do that too. The only thing that you're really risking with bank account bonuses for one, you're not really worried about the credit checks. I mean, that's a big thing too. You're not worried about having your credit score really touched at all. Um, but on top of that, the only thing you're really missing out on is just the opportunity cost of having that money tied up somewhere else. And with credit cards, right. you have to go spend that money with bank account bonuses. You just have to hold it in a different account, which I think is pretty cool. Especially like when you said about, um, just the stock market returns and what you could get for your money a couple of years ago compared to just keeping that money in a bank account bonus like churning account, basically, you get a lot more money in that bank account rather than in the stock market in some in some cases, you know. Yeah. Plus, I use the word lock up, but like you can go, like if something happens, it's still yeah. a deposit account. You can go get it. Um, so I say, you know, bonuses that are like, hey, direct deposit a thousand dollars over here and use your debit card. Those are always worth it because your money has to go somewhere. Yeah. And of course, we talk about you know the value of hub accounts and not you know getting reckless so you don't have no money at the home base to pay for anything um, those are always worth it but yeah now a lot of the business accounts or things like that where it's like hey look, give us 10 grand for this amount of time you got to do the math now um but a lot of them it doesn't it's like at work you know when they give you your raise but it's like in a percentage and you go back and you do the math I'm like well that's not that much money but if yeah. you do the math usually it usually comes out you usually look pretty good um, even though the numbers might not feel like it, uh, the math usually works out. That the bonus, because you're getting that payment, um, usually comes out better. Now, again, really again, if you're someone watching this, we're like, hey, I can. I had someone comment. I mean, this is a bad deal because you can do this much more with put options. Like, well, yeah, probably. <laughs> but you know, the, a lot of people watching this don't know how to do put options, and I wouldn't tell you that I would pick up options. I would jump from bank accounts to, to options trading. <laughs> Options trading just gets thrown around a lot as an easy thing. It's actually like not that easiest thing in the world. Well, then, yeah, that person shouldn't be doing this. Uh, they, you know, but that's not all of us. And again, I think I would say this, if nothing else, and you touched on it, you said the words, you said like nest egg or savings, because you know, we all want to keep some cash back. And so these are all FDIC insured accounts. So instead of just keeping your, let's just say you had $10,000 and like, this is my furnace breaks money, right? Yeah. But just keep moving it around, knowing that you don't want to do anything overly risky with this money. But then if your furnace breaks, you're not telling your family to put on a coat, right? Well, I might, yeah. but so I don't have family of my own. But you say, okay, well, look, I'm going to have to bail on this bonus, buy the furnace. But that's fine because you have picked up a few extra hundred dollars. If nothing else, I'm looking at it like that. Again, I don't expect anyone to go as crazy as I do. I don't, I don't even think I get the most value out of it. I think part of it I just find fun. So yeah. you know, there's that, which is probably not good financial advice. But, you know, it's <laughs> At fun. least you're making money, you know. Try. You can have fun, like, for example, trading options. I used to try to – I did that for a little bit tried to do that for a little bit lost everything i tried to do it with which was luckily not much but it that's another way you can have fun or go go to vegas and have fun but at least well you're... that'll be your second channel you'll teach us how to do the real stuff man <laughs> just, yeah, we'll see you I'm, just, I'm just the guy talking you're, you're the man <laughs> well, i appreciate that before we kind of wrap it up here i did want to cover two more things um the first of which being that i know that you recently started your new website I think it's important to discuss that a little bit more. I think you've touched on it a bit, but oh, can you well, explain you. a little bit more about your, your website? Yeah. So it's profitablecontent.com. And I mean, the gist of it is when I was looking around, I feel like we, no one's really put together the full package of things. Right. I've always thought like the points guy should have been the biggest person on YouTube by far. Why they're not, I don't know, <laughs> but it tells you two things. There's actually there's probably a lot of money to be had in blogs. And yeah. additionally, there's still a lot of other stuff to talk about. Uh, so, you know, it started from the bank phone. So you're familiar with the doctor credit, Danny Deal Guru, right. very similar. 
but you know, there's a ton of different bonuses out there that I won't have time to make videos about or it won't make sense to make a video about for a one bonus in Iowa or whatever. But it doesn't mean the first people in Iowa shouldn't know about it and be able to take advantage of it. True. So we write about it. So I'll put credit card offers up there, bank bonuses, and some of the news stories that we cover. Um, I, you know, I like the way things look. So a lot of other sites are going to be more utilitarian, which is fine, but try to at least make it user friendly, look good, move quickly, that kind of stuff. So uh, recently we've started doing channel memberships on, on the channel. So what I'm trying to work out with folks is, and if anyone's interested, you know, I'm trying to more like, how do we make money together? I right. guess the thing, which, which sounds cliche a little bit, but you know, a lot of the game, a lot of the second channel, especially is referral links. Like that's where the money's at. But like I'll max out of a referral link so I can, can I just tag somebody else in so they can make that money or the same with the credit card offers. You know, if I don't have an affiliate link for it or, you know, or someone else has a link, why can't I just use their link? So that's something else I'm trying to use it for now. So we just started that. So I will see how that goes. I'll probably do an update video here in a month or two to let people know how it's going. But that's the website kind of get everything come full circle so you can get your information however you like it you know it's like youtube but with words yeah exactly no i love that I, it's definitely something that i'd like to do at some point i think as i've mentioned to you before um it just it just makes sense i mean we're already making making the content in one form so might as well share it in others too and if you're you know able to stay on top of all these bonuses and you're already reading these articles and you're already doing the stuff why not share with other people you know so I think, yeah, it's kind of like trying to build out the network, you know, because the people who send me things, a person or two will send stuff. And, you know, because if we're all looking around, you know, wherever we live, you know, we can, yep. we can pull together and, you know, just because this one doesn't benefit you, the next one might, and the next one someone shares might. I think there's a lot of money that we're leaving on the tables. That's kind of where where we're coming from and it, it is you know i know some people have the time to make videos that are two or three minutes long i don't have the time um right. if i can't get the mid-roll ads it's just really not going to be worth it if we're just being blunt but yeah. to write an article like or write an article was generous right <laughs> to, to put the story <laughs> here you know say hey here's what's going on then you can pick and choose what you want to see is great if you just like the channel well that's fine too you like both it's trying to just you know if, it, if it, it's scalable because it builds off of each other it's all kind of the same content so that helps exactly. but that's been fun learning wordpress it took some time uh, we're getting there we're getting there. yeah that's that's another skill set i'm not ready to pick up yet but maybe one day maybe one day but at the same time so i know you have you have the blog now you also have your main channel rj financial you have run on the bank so just to book in this whole conversation i just want to know what your goals are for your channel channels and blog just your whole business in general in 2023 it's funny. It's like it. You know, sometimes I think you end up doing the thing that you, you know, doing what you, you know, it's, it takes you a while to like articulate what you're trying to do, even though you're like working on it at the time. So like for the first two years, I, you know, I didn't really know what I was trying to do. This is more. So let me just do this. I thought this would be something I could do to get extra money to pay for repairs on houses, but houses are expensive and, uh, you know, you're just going to buy a ton of them. Right. So like yeah. got two and then, the market did its whole thing. And then I got more into this. So now like to put it concisely, what I'm trying to do is build the most profitable community on the internet. Like that's under my contact section on the website. That's kind of like the mini, the quick mention statement. Right. And so when I looked out, I kind of touched on it a little bit. When I looked out what's going on is like, what can I do that maybe hasn't quite been done yet, which is kind of tough because most things have been done, right? But when I think back to like the points guy, I mean, he he was really the first one. That guy's still going on like national television, dude, right? Yeah. That should be the biggest YouTube channel out there, right? right? Or Doctor of Credit or View from the Wing, you know, but I don't think anyone's really put it all together. Now, not that every person is going to be watch you and follow you on every single platform, yeah. but – I, that was kind of like, how do we make the most profitable community on the internet? I think we've got the channels. I think the blog fills a gap in that. I think that the channel membership project we just started is kind of like, again, that's only for people who like, you know, everyone's invited, but yeah, that's people who really, really want to play. So we've got enough something for everyone at every level, right. how much money you want to try to make. Um, so that's kind of where I want to go fill in, fill in that. So we are the most profitable community. So when you come here, I'm not going to be the most popular, right? You're never going to be the most popular hating Amex. <laughs> I do. <laughs> so many people probably thumbs down already, uh, but I do think I can be the most profitable in this space. I think that is a realistic goal that you can kind of build up. We focus a lot on, you know, the basics, um, a lot of, 
evergreen stuff, but like really, really drilled down. Um, yeah. It's like, I know I've got a lot of playlists where it's like, it'll be type of credit card and like 15 videos deep. Right? right. But one thing I've learned like from mortgage and title work in, in the regular job, right. Is that the people who are like the most deadly, I go the most places high up, not the ones that went to school. This isn't like an anti-school thing, but they're the ones who really, really know the ins and outs of the game, not just their department. They know how your department works. They know what our clients do. And it was like, if I can focus on that, they won't be the most popular, but they'll be there when you need them. And so if I can be the for channel is like, I'm there with the topic when you need it, that's fine. There, there, there's a, there's a lane for that. Um, and, you know, when you learn those master those skills, then becoming more profitable, I think it makes a lot more sense because you can learn how the bank works, how to take money from them. Then if you so choose, you can move that up to going to find someone who can help you with investments and things like that, you know, stuff that I'm not super versed in. So that's probably the goal for right now. Um, the immediate goal is, you know, integrate, making sure I can come through for those channel members who have, you know, decided, hey, you're worth $5 a month, right? I got to deliver for them. So I'm trying to work through that and how to make sure they're at least getting you know their money's worth um from the membership so that'll probably be for this plus the tournament's coming up the march madness tournament yep. for credit cards so that'll be the next project so after march we'll probably check back in on the memberships and uh you know before long we'll find another another project to pick up that kind of fits in to that but that's the overall goal be the most profitable community on the internet that's awesome yeah I mean, like, I, like I've kind of harped on multiple times here, I think that is the biggest thing I've gained from your channel is just the knowledge and the ability to become profitable in multiple different spaces, particularly with credit cards and, and bank account bonuses. But that kind of stuff transfers just to, like you, like you said, to have that, that broader knowledge of just this, the business of banking and credit cards in general, I think is really important. And I think your, you know, your weekly recaps are one thing where I learn a lot about what's going on right now and can find ways to be profitable there. But your evergreen content is, is super valuable too. And I definitely recommend that everybody go check out all the playlists you have on your channel because I know you you do have some pretty intense ones in there that are really good to know. So Oh, well, thanks. I, you know, I'm big on organization. <laughs> so it's not yeah. to get everything laid out. But, but I, I, the idea is if you go there and you start it in order, you could come out of it and you could be good to go and you could be pretty lethal. I'm trying to build up the travel stuff that is coming. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. It'll come in, in due time. But before we officially end, do you have any other things you'd like to talk about? Of course, I'll be linking all of your channels, your your blog, everything down below that people can find you at. But do you have any parting words of wisdom or encouragement or anything like that you'd like to share? Like for someone who wants to get into the into the credit card game or into YouTube or what? Like what would you yeah. be most interested in? Life too, anything. I'll, I'll let, let you take general. it. <laughs> I've this is on the spot advice. I would say whatever you're going to do, have a plan. Honestly, uh, whether it's going to be the credit card game, whether it's going to be starting your own channel, starting your own business, whatever it is, um, because it, it sounds very cliche. Everything that we see businesses do, right? When we work at companies seems so laughable because it's not really our companies. So like we don't really care that much, you know, you should have a mission statement. Well, it's different when it's your thing, right? Like you should like be the most profitable community is a mission statement to a degree. So I think whatever you're going to do, we talk about road mapping credit cards, road mapping yeah. bank accounts, so just a plan. Cause when you go through the planning process to make an actionable plan, you'll end up having to cover questions that you didn't necessarily think of. So, you know, if I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to start a website, you can go through, what am I going to talk about? But then you get into, okay, well, how do I maintain it? Or how do I learn to do that? Or like what host that like you'll end up answering all these questions that you probably didn't even think of of course your plan is going to change it'll probably be wrong my channel name has changed like four times my original channel is going to be about real estate <laughs> so mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's going to be the most successful plan but i think a lot of times we almost reward too much the behavior like i'm just going to rush in like you know don't wait too long you're never going to know everything but i think the biggest thing right. to be whatever you're going to sit down and do build out an actionable plan that's going to help you go through all your boxes, all the questions and help you figure out more questions and more answers. So yeah. that, there we go. That's my part for whatever you want to do in life. Yeah. I, th I think that's good advice to end on. And RJ, as always, I appreciate our conversations and you taking the time to talk with me here tonight. But like I said, be linking everything down below and hopefully people can continue to watch you or 
you know, find you now and start watching you because you do put out some really great content. So thank you again for being here. Hey, I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Thank you to you and your audience for having me. And I hope to do it again sometime. Oh yeah, of course we will. If you made it to this point in the video, I really just can't thank you enough for sticking around. And as always, I'll be linking the creator conversations playlist right here. So you can check out all the other great guests I've had. But if you're interested to see how much money I personally made from credit cards in 2022, then be sure to watch this video next instead. Thank you so much again for watching this video. If you did enjoy, which I hope you did, if you're at this point in the video, then please be sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel and I'll catch you guys next time.